by you and President Xi, and, and we understand that. Uh, obviously, you have some great negotiators on your side, as does the Vice Premier in that regard. They, there are a lot of details to work through, but ultimately, you and President Xi are going to have to really do the deal. I think we're doing very well with regard to farmers and the buying of products from our farmers at, at a certain point. Uh, they've already made a big commitment to do that, but uh, this will be a very, very substantial farm deal. This will be the biggest farm deal ever made, if you think about it. I don't think anything would be close because it's China. So hopefully, if we arrive at a deal, they'll be buying lots of every form of farm product. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, would you say something, if you'd like? Well, I think this is probably a very historic time and these are the two biggest economies in the world. And if these uh, difficult uh, structural issues can get worked out, I think it will be tremendously beneficial not only to China and the United States, but to the whole world economy. So I know people have been working very hard. We've had many, many sessions, both in Beijing and here. And I appreciate the hard work and the diligence that's going on. Thank you. Yeah, that's going very well. Peter, would you like to say something? This is a gentleman that loves tariffs, by the way. He's like me. He and I love tariffs. But Peter, go ahead. I agree with you, sir. Tariffs are simple and they're enforceable. Right. Right. Okay. That's all you have to say. Right. But it's uh, it's true. I wish the team luck. Good. <clears throat> they're doing a good job. Larry? I'll just echo and you know, a good deal that is enforceable. That's so important to the United States and to you. But if you get a good deal and we can reduce these barriers, I think it will be good for growth and prosperity for the U.S. and for China. I think the relationship has been very good. That's what I will say, more than anything else. I, as to whether we make a deal or not, who knows? But I think we have a good chance. But I think the relationship is outstanding. I think the relationship that we have now with China is better than it's ever been. And that's being, you know, making a big statement. Our relationship, the president, the, the president's uh, relationship with me, President Xi's relationship with me, uh, I think that uh, it's the strongest it's ever been. One of the things that's so important to me is the fentanyl. And uh, President Xi has agreed to criminalize the sale of fentanyl. Right now, it's not a criminal product. Uh, because I guess they call it industrial or they call it something, but it's not a criminal product. And China has much tougher laws than we do in this country on drugs. And they don't have a big drug problem in China. But they have a thing called the death penalty. And uh, China has much tougher laws than we do. But they've agreed to criminalize the sale of fentanyl, including the sale of fentanyl to the United States. Uh, and that is a tremendous thing because, as you know, most of it, if not all of it, comes from China. That would be a tremendous thing in terms of our war on drugs. So I very much appreciate that. And that's another thing we'll be finalizing, hopefully, at the meeting that we have. So subject to where they are, we're going to have a meeting now, but subject to where they are, we will be having at least an additional meeting. And then ultimately, we'll have a meeting with myself and President Xi to discuss the final terms and things that haven't been agreed to. But I think a lot of those things have been agreed to. But they want he and I to agree to them in a final form. Uh, but the fentanyl is so important to us. The uh, criminalization of fentanyl is so important to us, and we appreciate that. Uh, I want to uh, just thank everybody for being with us. Mr. Vice Premier, I want to thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, their trip is being extended, as Steve said. Their trip is being extended by two days, uh, unexpectedly, because they are making great progress. So they'll be here for an extra couple of days. So what would that include? That would be Sunday, Monday, or? It'll be all day Saturday and all day Sunday. All day Sunday. So they'll be leaving on Sunday night and Monday morning. So uh, great progress being made. Let's see what happens. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Mr. Thank President, you. do you expect to extend the deadline because of the progress here, or do you, will you still stick with March 1st? Well, I set the deadline of March 1st, and right now it's at 10 percent. And I think that if — and you can tell this to President Xi — I think that if I see progress being made, substantial progress being made, uh, it would not be inappropriate to extend that deadline. Keep it at 10 percent instead of raising it to 25 percent. And I would be inclined to doing that. I haven't even spoken to my people about it. Most people assume it'll just kick in automatically to 25 percent. But I'm the one that said it, and I think it was a reasonable period of time. But it, we're covering things that we didn't even know we'd be covering. We're going very deep into the trade and covering items that a lot of people wanted to cover and nobody thought we'd ever get to. But we have a one-time shot at making a great deal for both countries. 
And so we are uh, we are going to give it. So it, it depends on where we are. If we're doing well, Jeff, if we're doing very well on the negotiation, I could see extending that. And I don't think it would have to be a long-term extension, because I would imagine that uh, if it took, Steve, another month or so or, or less. Yeah, I think our expectation is to conclude this quickly. And uh, if, if we get to the point over the next few days of making progress, recommending yeah. a meeting for you and President yeah. Xi. So dependent on how they do over the next few days, uh, I would uh, certainly consider that. Okay. Meeting in Mar-a-Lago, sir. He's drawing down U.S. troops on consideration. Say it. He's drawing down U.S. troops on consideration. I, I don't understand. Is drawing down U.S. troops yeah. a consideration in your upcoming summit with North Korea and Kim Jong-un? No, it's not. No. That is not a consideration. What about the not, That is not one of the things on the table. What is on the table? Oh, you really want me to discuss that I now? Do. Everything <laughs> is on the table. Mr. President, do you have any concerns about the Labor Secretary's handling of the Jeffrey Epstein case? I really don't know too much about it. I know he's done a great job as Labor Secretary. and. Uh, that seems like a long time ago, but I know he's he's been a fantastic labor secretary. That's all I can really tell you about what, it. That's all I know about it. What about the charges against Bob Kraft? He's a, he's a friend of yours. Well, it's very sad. Uh, I was very surprised to see it. Uh, he's proclaimed his innocence totally, and uh, but I'm very surprised to see it. Mr. Have you President, spoken sir. with Bill Barr about the release of the Mueller report? Have you spoken no, with him I about not. that? You've no, said I, nothing to him I about it. I have not. Do you expect to? At some point, I guess I'll be talking about it. But you know the nice part? There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. There was no anything. So that's the nice part. There was no phone calls, no nothing. We have a uh, — I won a race. You know why I won the race? Because I was a better candidate than she was and had nothing to do with Russia. And everybody knows it's a hoax. It's one of the greatest hoaxes ever perpetrated on this country. So I look forward to seeing the report. If it's an honest report, it will say that. If it's not an honest report, it won't. Yeah, go ahead. On trip, you've been at this, and your teams have been at this trade deal for a long time. Yeah, well, it's not like a long it's time when you consider it's probably the biggest deal ever made. It seems like it's getting close to the finish line. At this point, you boil it all down. Do you believe it's more likely that a deal does happen or a deal doesn't happen? Well, I think I can speak for the United States. Uh, the question is an interesting one. Is it more likely that a deal happens or doesn't happen? Speaking for the United States, I would say it's probably more likely that a deal does happen. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Um, speaking for China, if you'd like to a answer that question, you can. But I would say that it's more likely that a deal will happen. Uh, the fact that they're staying — and this is a very high delegation. This is a, uh, a man who is uh, revered all throughout China as the Vice Premier. So the fact that they're willing to stay for um, quite a bit longer period, doubling up the time, that means something. I think there's a good chance that it happens. Go ahead. You, would you like to answer Mr. that question? Wait. Would you like to answer that question? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. May I speak Chinese? Yes. Please speak Chinese, and you'll, you'll speak louder. Okay. You take care of you. I will. Well, from China, we think the possibility is very large. We very hope that so, uh, from China, we believe it is that uh, — You have to speak louder. I'm sorry. From China, we believe that it is very likely that it will happen, and we hope that ultimately we'll have a deal. And the Chinese side is ready to make our uttermost effort. I think we both feel that way. I think we both feel that there's a very good chance that the deal will happen. Mr. President, on troops in Syria, why are you reversing course? I'm not reversing there? course. Uh, I have done something that nobody else has been able to do. In another short period of time, like hours, you'll be hearing hours and days, you'll be hearing about the caliphate. It'll, it's 100 percent defeated. Nobody's been able to say that. That doesn't mean there aren't some very bad people walking around and strapping on bombs and all of these things. But we've done a job that nobody else has been able to do. I heard Lindsey Graham this morning congratulating me on having defeated the, cal you know, the caliphate. And frankly, uh, I'm getting a lot of congratulations. At the same time, we can leave a small force along with others in the force, whether it's uh, NATO troops or whoever it might be, so that it doesn't start up again. And I'm okay. It's a very small, tiny fraction of the people we have. And uh, a lot of people like that idea, and I'm open to ideas. But uh, the 2,500 people that we've had there will be going to different parts of the world. They may be going over to Iraq, where we have a very powerful base. Uh, a base that cost billions of dollars to build, frankly, and that we'll be using. Uh, but we have had tremendous success in 
defeating the caliphate. And now everybody's admitting, I did more in the last three or four weeks than people have done in years. And uh, it's been very successful. Uh, but we want to make sure it stays that way. Yes, please. Tech transfers going into the trade deal. We've heard that you haven't made a whole lot of progress on the tech transfer. Do you want to talk about the transfer Does tech? Still have to be yeah, I'll, I'll let Bob answer that. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, the answer is yes. It's one of the structural issues. It has to be done properly. And we've made a lot of progress on it. So whoever told you we weren't just didn't know what they were talking about. Mr. President, President, why haven't you condemned the North, uh, the North Carolina election fraud? This is a big story. The Republican candidate is calling for a new election. Why have you not condemned that, given you've condemned other kinds of voters? Well, fraud? I condemn any election fraud. And uh, when I look at what's happened in California with the votes, when I look at what happened, as you know, there was just a case where they found a million fraudulent votes. Uh, when I look at what's there happened in Texas. There haven't been those cases. This is an me. actual case. Excuse sir. me. When I look at what's happened in Texas, when I look at that catastrophe that took place in Florida, where the Republican candidates kept getting less and less and less and less. Unfortunately, uh, Rick Scott and Ron uh, ended up winning their election, but it was disgraceful what happened there. So I look at a lot of different places all over the country. I condemn any voter fraud of any kind, whether it's Democrat or Republican. But when you look at some of the things that happened in California, in particular, when you look at what's happened in Texas with all of those votes that they recently found were uh, not exactly properly done. I condemn all of it. And that includes North Carolina. If anything, you know, I guess they're going to be doing a final report, but I'd like to see the final report. But any form of election fraud, I condemn. Mr. President, when do you want to have that meeting with President Xi, and do you expect to have that in Mar-a-Lago? Uh, probably at Mar-a-Lago. Probably fairly soon, during the month of March. Bob, do you have a, a date? Steve, do you have a date? We're, we're planning it with your schedule. Mr. Okay, so there, we have two schedules, and we'll be planning that with the schedule. Mr. Do you have any concerns about Michael Cohen's testimony before no, Congress this no, week? No, no. Mr. President, are you still considering it? Lawyer, client, but, uh, you know, he's taking his own chances. Where do you think stands with Huawei and ZTE? Would you still consider a ban? Well, ZTE paid a big fine of $1.2 billion, which uh, nobody's ever even heard of before. And uh, we want everybody to compete. And I guess it'll be somewhat of a subject that we're talking about here, Bob. We'll be talking about it. We may or may not include that in this deal. Include what? Would you drop uh, the charges? Huawei and ZTE. Would you drop criminal charges against Huawei? Uh, we're going to be discussing all of that during the course of the next couple of weeks. And we'll be talking to the U.S. attorneys. We'll be talking to the attorney general. Uh, but we'll be making that decision. Right now, it's not something that we're discussing. Do you think that Mr. congressional Republicans will stick with you on the uh, on your emergency declaration and vote against? Oh, I think the they'll stick. Yeah, everybody knows we need border security. We need a wall. I think it's a very bad subject for the Democrats. Uh, we need a wall. We've apprehended more people than we have in many many years. Apprehended, meaning we've gotten. With the wall, we wouldn't even have to apprehend them if we had the proper structure. It's costing us a lot of money with the military. We have a lot of military there. We have tremendous border control and border security there. We have — I'll tell you what, the people of border security, uh, people of ICE, the law enforcement, generally speaking, have done an incredible job at the border. We have caravans heading up, and we're able to head out the caravans. We've done a great job. But if we had the wall, it would be much easier. And, frankly, it would be — a job that would be perfecto, and it would cost, actually, ultimately, a lot less money. So you don't think okay. that Will you veto that resolution, Thank Mr. President? You. Mr. President? Mr. President? What? Okay. Uh, a question from Chana Daly. Uh, you tweeted yesterday that uh, uh, the U.S. will not block out the uh, currently more advanced technology in terms of 5G, 6Gs. What do you mean? Well, I'd like to have all companies be able to compete. I don't want to artificially block people out based on excuses or based on security. I don't want to have a security you problem. You Wait. I'm talking about everybody, really, including, but I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. I don't want to use artificial blocking. We want to have great 5G. Ultimately, that's going to morph into 6G, and probably 6G will be obsolete in about two months, the way it's going, you know, the way that whole world moves. But 6G at some point in the future will be obsolete. But I want to have competition with China, fair competition. 
Uh, I don't want to block out anybody if we can help it. Now, if there's going to be a security reason or something, then we have no choice. But that is one of the things we'll be discussing today. We want to have open competition. We've always done very well in open competition. Go Mr. ahead. Mr. President, your officials mentioned that there was a deal on currency. Can you explain to us what that well, was? Well, we'll let you know at the appropriate time. But we have a deal on currency and currency manipulation, yes. Will you definitively veto that resolution that was introduced today that would block your national emergency if it passes? On the wall? Yes. Will I veto it? 100 percent. 100 percent. And I don't think it survives a veto. We have too many smart people that want border security, so I can't imagine it could survive a veto. But I will veto it, yes. Mr. President, yeah. last year you had blocked all U.S. assistance to Pakistan because of terrorists coming from there. No, I stopped paying Pakistan the $1.3 billion that we were paying them. In the meantime, we may set up some meetings with Pakistan. Pakistan was uh, taking very strong advantage of the United States under other presidents, and we were paying Pakistan $1.3 billion a year. I ended that payment to Pakistan because they weren't helping us uh, in a way that they should have. And honestly, we've had — we've developed a much better relationship with Pakistan over the last short period of time than we had. But I did. I ended the payment. We were paying Pakistan $1.3 billion a year. I ended that about nine months ago. A lot of people don't know that, but I ended it nine months ago. Coming from Pakistan and in Afghanistan and But what are you talking about? What are you what are you trying to refer to? You have to speak up, I can't hear you. Terrorists coming from Pakistan yeah. attacked Indian forces in Kashmir. That's right. No, it's a terrible thing going on right now between Pakistan and India. is a very, very bad situation, and it's a very dangerous situation between the two countries. And we would like to see it stop. A lot of people were just killed, and uh, we want to see it stopped. We're very much involved in that, yes, if that's what you're referring people to. People in India are seeking right to self-defense. No, India is looking at something very strong. And, I mean, India just lost almost 50 people and with an attack. So I can understand that also. But uh, we're talking, and a lot of people are talking, but it is a very, very uh, delicate balance going on. Right now, there's a lot of problems between India and Pakistan because of what just happened. Mr. President. In Kashmir. Are you talking about Kashmir? Yeah. In Kashmir, it's very dangerous. Yes, please. Mr. President, when Wait. on Huawei, sir, just one quick follow-up, are you planning an executive order on Huawei? Well, we're not doing anything right now. We may or may not put that in the trade agreement. We may be discussing it, but we'd only do that uh, in conjunction with the Attorney General of the United States, because that is a, uh, a matter that is outside of what we're doing. So we do that with the Attorney General, if we do anything. And I guess there's a question as to whether or not that's being included in the agreement. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. President, we haven't gotten your uh, response yet to Amazon pulling out of, of New York City. You're I think it's a big loss for New York City. I think it's a big loss. I think it's uh, — if you look at the deal, I, the deal was not a great deal from the standpoint of they could have made a better deal than that, a much better deal. But still, I think it's a loss for New York City. And uh, the $3 billion wasn't a check. It was a form of taxes over a period of time that now uh, they'll never see because, you know, they were, they were going to take in a lot of jobs. They were going to take in a lot of taxes. So I think it's a big loss for — New York City. It's the kind of thinking that our country's going to on the left, on the radical left. But ultimately, it's not good for jobs, and it's not good for the economy. But I think it was a big loss for New York City. I come from New York City. I love New York City. I think it was a big loss for New York City. Yes, sir. Mr. President, when were you briefed, sir, on the Coast Guard member who was arrested for threatening Democrats and other members of the I'm media? actually getting a very final briefing and a very complete briefing in about two hours. And do you have any this. thoughts on this man I think who it's a went shame. after members of the media? Yeah. I think it's a very sad thing when a thing like that happens. And I've expressed that, but I'm actually getting a uh, very complete briefing in about two hours. Do you think that you bear any responsibility for moderating your language when it comes to that? No, I don't. I think my language is very nice. Yes. Mr. President, I'm Yes. Uh, from, the state from China. China. From China. Uh, trade conflict has been one year, not negotiating going on. So what's your what do you think? Who are you with in China? Uh, People's Daily China newspaper. People's Daily? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the, what do you think? The cooperation is still the good solution? Great the cooperation. Yeah. We have great cooperation both ways with China. And a lot of good things are happening. I, I mean, I think you see that. So many people every day, they are going to make a deal. They aren't going to make a deal. They don't know. They have no idea. It's fake news. You know, it's one of those things. 
Do they have fake news in China? I think so. <laughs> but uh, it's a question. Are they going to make a deal? Aren't they? I think we have a very good chance of making a deal. But both parties want to make it a meaningful deal. We don't want to make a deal that doesn't. I can speak for the Vice Premier. I can speak for President Xi. I can speak for myself. Both parties want to make this a real deal. We want to make it a meaningful deal, not a deal that's done and doesn't mean anything. We want to make this a deal that's going to last for many, many years and a deal that's going to be uh, good for both countries. But we want to make it meaningful. Now, with that being said, China has the advantage of having many years of tremendous success at the expense of the United States. So they understand that. And I never blamed China for that. I blamed our past leaders. Our leaders have done a lousy job with trade. Our country lost $800 billion last year with trade, generally. $800 billion. So the Vice Premier understands that. So uh, this same agreement should have been made 20 years ago, not now. Because for 20 years, the United States has been really uh, taken advantage of. And I'm not blaming China. We should have done the same thing to them. But we didn't do that. We had presidents that didn't do their job. You want to know the truth? We had presidents that did not do their job. Yeah, go ahead. Will the MOU be a long-term deal? How long do you, would your MOU stay? I, I think the MOU is going to be very short term. No, I, we expect to go into I don't like MOUs because they don't mean anything. To me, they don't mean anything. I think you're better off just going into a document. I was never, uh, never a fan of an MOU. So an MOU is a contract. It's the way trade agreements are generally used. People refer to it like it's a term sheet. It's not a term sheet. It's an actual contract between the two parties. Yeah. A memorandum of understanding is a binding agreement between two people. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. It's detailed. It covers everything uh, in, in, in great detail. It's just called a, a memorandum of understanding. It's a legal term. It's a contract. And would you think that that would be a very yes. long term deal, yes. sir? Yes, yes, I think so. Yes. Contracts last while they last. There's no term. They last while they last. Mr. Mr. President, President, on North Korea, By the way, sir? I disagree. I think that a memorandum of understanding okay. is not a contract uh, to the extent that we want. We're going to have — we're doing a memorandum of understanding. That will be put into a final contract, I assume. But to me, the final contract is really the thing, Bob — and I think you mean that, too — is really the thing that means something. A memorandum of understanding is exactly that. It's a memorandum of what our understanding is. But to me, the contract is uh, — uh, the real question is, Bob, so we do a memorandum of understanding, which, frankly, you could do or not do. I don't care if you do it or not. To me, it doesn't mean very much. But if you do a memorandum, how long will it take to put that into a final binding contract? What? From now on, we're not using the word memorandum of understanding anymore. We're going to use the, the, the term trade agreement, all right? Okay. Right. No more. We'll never use the term Good. again. We'll have the same document. It's going to be called a trade agreement. We're never going to use MOU again. Are they going to put that into another agreement? It, it'll, what we'll have will be a trade agreement that, if the, if we have cross, I have we have major hurdles. I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. Assuming you decide on an agreement, it'll be signed by the two people. It'll be a trade agreement between the United States Good. and China. We're Good. not going to use it. Anymore. I like that much better. I like that term much better. Agree with that. Yes, I don't — I wouldn't go into a memorandum. I would go right into a trade agreement. Either you're going to make a deal or you're not. To have these other agreements doesn't mean anything. Because they're not that meaningful, in my opinion. But anyway, I like that much better. Mr. President, what do you think needs to be done after your meeting with Lynn Patton on Guy Chak? Good, good, good. What? You had a meeting with Lynn Patton on the New York City Housing Authority? Yeah, Lynn Patton is great. And I can tell you, the New York City Housing Authority, the mayor of New York, has done a terrible job with public housing. We're trying to help them, but the mayor of the city of New York has done a terrible job with respect to public housing. We're getting reports back, and it's a disgrace how badly New York City handles its public housing. On North Korea, Korea sir. Iowa, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Do you, do you have any um, thoughts on Bill de Blasio heading to Iowa? Well, I think he has to learn how to run New York City before he starts running the country, because he hasn't done a very good job. On North Korea, you're Including, own... by the way, with Amazon. On North Korea, your own administration officials say that Kim Jong-un has not actually decided yet whether he wants to denuclearize. So how can you meet with him if he doesn't even want to get the gold? We have had get? such a great relationship, and China has helped us a lot with North Korea, with Kim Jong-un, since I got to office. If I were not elected president, you would have been in a war with North Korea. We now have a situation where the relationships are good where there's been no nuclear testing, no missiles, no rockets. We got our hostages back. 
Uh, we have many of the remains back and coming back rapidly. The remains of our great warriors from many, many years ago, and the families are so thrilled and so happy. Uh, we've had a great relationship. Uh, the Singapore was a tremendous success. Only the fake news likes to portray it otherwise. We would have gone, we would have been, we would have literally been in a war with North Korea, in my opinion, had I not been elected. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank sir, you. your own officials say North Korea is not doing what you want them to, sir. Thank you. We'll see how it goes. I think it'll be successful. Do you think Steve King should run again? Should Steve King? I, I, you have to speak up. I'm, I'm trying. It's, uh, do you think Steve King should run again for Congress? He said he'd run. You know, I don't know anything about the situation. When did he announce that? So today, he said he wanted to run again. I have not seen it. He hasn't told me anything, so we'll, we'll have to take a look. Are you still in touch with him? I haven't spoken to him in a long time, no. I haven't spoken. I have not been involved in that. Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, guys. He couldn't hear that.